we're meeting with the mayor is a weekly segment you will only see right here on CBS 47. It's where we check in with different Valley mayors to keep up with the growth. Joining me this week is Madeira Mayor Santos Garcia. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you very much, Madeira, for inviting me. Yes. Happy to be here. Can you speak a little bit about Madeira and what's going on? Obviously, I feel like many people, when they think of Madeira right now, is the hospital situation mm -hmm. and not having a hospital. What's being done? I know that there's been some work in the state assembly and trying to get the state's help, but where do you guys stand? Absolutely. The, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Of course, right now, a, a lot of Madeira and regional residents are being affected by the closure of the, of the hospital because we serve other communities. We serve Fresno, we serve Kerman, Chowchilla, the, the real uh, mountainous areas. And so bringing it back is something that's very, very much uh, important to us. Thank goodness for the governor, uh, for Senator Ana Caballero and Esmeralda, Assemblywoman Esmeralda Soria, for making it happen so that we can begin the process toward bringing back an, a, a institution to Madeira again. There's been a lot of things that have been reported about just the financial status of the mm -hmm. hospital before, mm -hmm. but there were those ARPA funds that came down from the federal government. Now, I know there's the county, but also the city, but can you talk about the decision to decide to not put as much towards the hospital, especially when there's this financial crisis going on? Yeah, so we're a small community. We're less than 77,000 uh, members in our, in our community, so we're a small community. And so putting in those ARPA funds, which we need for our infrastructure, we have a lot of work to do on our water and our sewer uh, infrastructure that we cannot afford to, to put money into the, into the hospital. There are other institutions like, for instance, the state and federal government, which we're working with every day to try to bring back the hospital. But it would be a, a, a huge impact for our community for us to take a million dollars, let's say, and then donate it to the hospital to get, to get back in place. Place. One million dollars is not going to overcome the problems that the, the bankruptcy is facing for the Madeira Community Hospital. And you guys were able to get about 23 on the city side, right? We for were, those ARPA. And can you speak about the the sewer problem and really deciding to put the money towards that? Right. Was it really a juggling of deciding whether it was the sewer or the hospital? No, although we very much feel and are, are feeling the impact of the hospital. We had our sewer line, which is called a trunk line, go out to our sewer treatment plant. It burst. It had, it was, we had to do emergency repair during all this rain that we had be, between December, uh, after December. And so we need to do that because if our residents can't use their, their infrastructure, then we're gonna be in very, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So no, we, we, we have to make the hard decisions and we, are, we don't run the hospital, we don't administrate the hospital in any way, shape or form. Although a lot of people have called me and say, what are you doing, Mayor, about the hospital? We don't have any tie into the hospital other than that, 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 that they are in Madeira. Mm -hmm. So it's really up to the board of, of directors of Madeira Community uh, Hospital to reach out and get the funds necessary to re reopen the hospital again. Yeah, but I'm sure a public health emergency, oh, especially yeah, with having to go all the way to Fresno um, mm -hmm. for those residents that really need that critical care. And so kind of switching gears, can you speak about what's gonna be done in the future? I know you talked about the money that's gonna be going towards the sewer, but in the future to make sure that something like this doesn't happen and to help out with the growth of a city that is growing quite rapidly. Yeah, correct. Uh, we we have approved uh, we uh, approved last year a 10,000 home new residential home uh, development to be uh, built in the north part of the city. It's going to be done in stages, so it's not going to be like right now. We're going to get brand new 10,000 brand new homes, uh, but we are a growing city. And so we need to prepare for that. But I've, I've always told anyone that, I've, that is willing to listen that this process of opening a hospital, whether it's Madeira Community Hospital or another institution that comes in, is gonna be a long process. It's gonna be a long process. You cannot just flip the switch and reopen the hospital. The ho hospital is completely empty. Um, they're sold off a lot of the uh, infrastructure in there, a lot of the machinery, computers, the doctors are no longer there, the nurses, the, 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 uh, uh, the staff 
that maintains the, the hospital. So we need to be prepared to, to understand that it's not gonna open uh, up again immediately. Now, as I said about the light at the end of the tunnel, our state is definitely, uh, our state government is definitely interested in bringing back. And so what they've done is pass the bill where that w w there's $150 million mm -hmm. uh, to re reopen um, uh, hospitals across the state. And we have had a lot of different companies who are interested in coming and investing in the Madera Hospital to reopen it. So it might not be Madera Community Hospital that reopens that institution. There's an application process and it's ongoing as of about three weeks ago. So if you look at Madera, we're uh, very, uh, now, very well situated. We just have been uh, unfortunately hit by these uh, catastrophes with all the rains and, 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 and the hospital. But other than that, uh, we're providing all of our services just like we have started in 2018. We have not made cutbacks to any services for our residents. So the, I believe the future is bright. Thank you so much, Mayor, for joining us. Do appreciate it. I know that it's some difficult uh, discussions, but happy that we're getting the message out to the public. And I want to uh, thank you for your uh, program. Um, uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of coverage for small towns. Uh, like like Mars, like uh, small cities, and you you being able to have a discussion with representatives from those communities in the Central Valley is a blessing, because we don't always get the news. We don't always ask uh, mm -hmm. what's going on in our communities, and this is, gets this gives us an opportunity to be able to, to discuss with you what's going on in our community. Well, thanks, Mayor. I appreciate all of you guys for being a part of it. And for you at home, if you would like to watch Meeting with the Mayors, it's live every Thursday at noon. It's then rerun at 4 on Thursdays and again Friday mornings. If you miss it, don't worry. You can catch it anytime on our website, yourcentralvalley.com backslash meetingmayors. We'll be right back after this.